going on, black family? Sadat here. Got Professor Black Truth's newest moment of truth. It's about 15 minutes long. Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this, this is the moment of truth. And now the Friday Crime Report. Portland, Portland Oregon, Saturday, Saturday September 2nd, 2023, 6 o'clock p.m. Portland, Portland police went, went to a metro train, train platform in response to a report of a stabbing. When they arrived, when they, arrived they, found they found two victims suffering from injuries, both of them, both of them just 17-year-old children. children. Both the victims, both the victims as well as the eyewitness, eyewitness accounts say that the attack began, began on the train. The two victims, the two victims have been on the train riding to their destination when a white, when a white man, man sitting in front of them jumped up and turned to face them. He was dressed, he was dressed all, in all in black with a sweatshirt that said villain in white letters. Not very subtle. He then shouted, F, followed by a, followed racial, by a slur, racial slur as he began, as he began his, his rampage, stabbing one, stabbing one teenager in the chest with a three-inch pocket knife. The second teen's, the second teen's arm, was arm was slashed by the attacker as well. The assailant, the assailant fled, fled, but was, but was spotted, spotted a few minutes later. After a brief, After a brief, brief foot chase, chase, he was arrested. Not surprisingly, Not surprisingly the, cops the cops took him in alive. No word on, no word on whether they took him to Burger King afterwards. The white media has identified the assailant as Adrian Cummings, who they're calling a 25-year-old homeless man who struggles with addiction. That's how they That's describe how they describe this would-be killer. Would be killer. When, the when the psycho killer, killer, killer Daniel, Daniel Penny strangled, Penny strangled Jordan, Jordan Neely to death, white media, the white media didn't, didn't call Jordan Neely a homeless man who struggled with addiction. They tried to demonize, they tried to him, demonize every him every way they could, and he didn't, and harm, he didn't anyone. harm anyone. Meanwhile, this, Meanwhile, this, animal, tries this animal tries to kill two children. Two children. These racists in the white media call him just a homeless man who wrestles with addiction. They say that as if that was all there was to this guy, but of course, they weren't telling the whole story. The teenager who was stabbed in the chest had to, had to be hospital. taken to the hospital in critical condition, in critical condition for damage to his, damage to his and heart internal and internal bleeding. Neither of the victims, Neither of the victims knew why this race killer attacked since they had done since nothing, had done to, nothing him. to him. But as we already but know, under white supremacy, these killers, these killers don't, don't need a reason. reason. They just need an opportunity. We know exactly, we know exactly why this happened, and the white media does, does too. Because they've gone, because they've gone to great lengths to avoid saying who these two victims were. They were both two black teenagers. The Fox affiliate article that I'm citing from only mentions the black word black once. once. That's it. That's it. Once in the entire, once in the entire article. article. And they don't the even headline. put it into the headline. Two black teenagers, Two black teenagers are the victims of a knife attack by a white supremacist. One of them stabbed, one of them stabbed in the chest and nearly dies. dies. And the white media, and white media thinks, thinks that their race is insignificant. Is when you go to, when you go to other white media outlets, they though, don't they don't even mention the victims being black at all. This is deliberate. meant to cause confusion. White media hopes to get people to move on since they provide so few details about the crime. These white supremacists white supremacists are making it a point to target black children. We need to understand, need to understand that. that. When, it when it comes to the Dylan Roofs and the Peyton Gendrons and the Adrian Cummings, we're dealing with, we're animals, dealing with animals here, here not human beings. White supremacist, white supremacist, white supremacist has, no has no conscience or decency. Keep that in mind, keep that in mind when dealing with them. And that includes, and the, white includes the white media who runs interference for them. They went out of their they way to not mention that the victims of this hate crime are black. That was deliberate because the Portland area is in the Northeast. People would just assume that the targets were most likely Asian, but of course the white media doesn't, doesn't say that either. This is how, this propaganda, is how propaganda works. works. People, are People are conditioned by the narratives that the white media uses. They make it a point, to, make it a point to use certain words and phrases in specific, in specific instances, instances to talk about certain, about certain people, and that's how they, condition, that's how they condition the public mind. mind. So when you talk, so when about, you talk about Portland or Seattle, or Seattle and, make sure and make sure to show only white and Asian faces, people will intentionally be misled into thinking, well, this was probably some anti-Asian hate. And then people will call for a hate crime law specifically for Asians, and when you point out, point out that black people are the overwhelming majority of hate crimes victims, we're told, we're told it well, it can't be that bad. People believe, people believe what they see from the white media, or in this case, or in this they, case believe they believe they what they see. didn't see. Cummings has since, Cummings been, has indicted since been indicted on a slew of charges, charges including, one, including count one count of second degree murder, attempted murder, one count of first degree assault, one count of second degree assault, two counts of first degree bias crime, one count of first degree robbery, three counts of unlawful use of a weapon, one count of interfering with public transportation, one count of first, one count of first degree assault, attempted assault, and one count of second degree assault. attempted assault. Now you probably see, now you probably see one or two charges in this list that don't actually, don't actually have anything to do with the attempted murders on that day in specific, and that's because, and that's because you won't be surprised, you won't be surprised
surprised to learn this isn't Adrian Cummings' first run-in with the law. In fact, it wasn't even his first run-in of the summer. Before I go any further, I found that the white media basically didn't want to have to report on this guy's priors. I had to really dig to find any mention of them, and I had to go to a number of different sources, because none of these white media outlets had them all in one article or even one website. This guy has been a one-man crime wave in the city for several months now. On July 7th of this year, Cummings was arrested after he caused a disturbance at a restaurant. And when the employees told him to leave, he pulled a knife and began cursing at them. He then took several steps toward their security guard. He was scheduled for a court appearance in early August, but of course he didn't show, so the judge issued a bench warrant. And police didn't have to wait long to find him because they would arrest him twice in the month of August. The first August arrest occurred when he was caught urinating in public on the university campus. Police found two knives and an expandable baton on him. Second arrest, Second arrest came on August 30th, a few days before, few he, days carried before he carried out his race attack on that train. That time, he, that was, time, arrested he was arrested for jaywalk. Police saw that, Police he, had saw that he had a warrant so out. That so case, that being the case, why wasn't this, why guy, wasn't this guy, guy in jail already, jail already if he had a bench warrant and the police had already arrested him a number of times? Well, we have some new well, information, some new this, information evening this evening now about a horrific, about a horrific attack police say was racially motivated. We're talking about the man accused of stabbing two teenagers, two teenagers on, a Max, on a Max train over the weekend. Adrian, Adrian Cummins is now charged with murder, attempted murder, assault, assault and, bias crime. and bias crime. Now, it turns out prosecutors say Cummins should, should have been in jail at the very time, at the very time, time of that attack. Though we've learned he was turned away and released despite a judge's order to keep him in custody. Investigative reporter Evan Watson went to try to squeeze some answers at what appears to be yeah. a gap in our system. In our system. Earlier, in Earlier in August, August police Portland police arrested Cummins. Arrested Cummins. He had an outstanding, had an outstanding like warrant for failing to show up to court on charges, on charges of menacing, menacing with a knife. That happened, that happened this earlier summer. this summer. A judge ordered, a judge that, Cummins ordered that Cummins needed to be held in jail until a hearing in late September. A police officer, a police brought, officer him brought him to the jail. The jail officials, the jail officials and corrections and health denied booking, denied booking him. After KGW, After KGW pressed, pressed, pressed for answers as to why Cummins, Cummins wasn't, wasn't held, a Multnomah County, Sheriff's, Sheriff's, County Sheriff's Office spokesman said on Wednesday, said on Wednesday that, Cummins that Cummins wasn't held in jail because of health or medical reasons. The spokesman did say health reasons are the most common example. Someone would be denied booking. In this case, in this case, Cummins was released, Cummins from, was released from custody and is now accused, is now accused of, robbing of robbing a store, stabbing two boys, stabbing two boys in a racially motivated, motivated attack, and running, from and running from police. So you see, so you he see, had he had already been arrested after the judge, after the judge issued, issued the order, order saying to lock him up, him and yet the authorities just, just couldn't seem to hold him because, because well, reasons. reasons. Though I think it's important, think it's important to note that after he, that attempted, after he to attempted to kill those two black teenagers, teenagers suddenly, suddenly the county jail actually held him. Though the authorities, though the authorities refused, refused to say why it is that suddenly they've been able to keep him in custody, I guess his health must have improved miraculously, right? Or perhaps it's because of all of the media coverage that's been heaped on this case. But that's far from his only run-ins with the law. After his attempted double murder hate crime, the owner of a local convenience store said that he recognized Cummings as the perpetrator of an armed robbery at his store. He had stolen, he had stolen a, number a number of items and then tried, and then to, tried to stab the store owner's son several times, son several times when the young man attempted to stop it. Police have reviewed, have reviewed video, video footage, footage of the incident and confirmed that Cummings was indeed the person who committed that crime, too. Back in April, Back in April Cummings was involved in a fight on the metro train. Gee, I think Gee, I, I, think I notice a pattern for him. That time, that time he was armed with a gun, which led to him being charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm. And why was and why was he a felon, you ask? You see, this reprobate isn't from Portland at all, or from Oregon, or even from the West Coast. He's actually a wanted fugitive from Ron DeSantis's state of Florida. This guy, had this guy had been convicted of drug possession, and while he had been, while he had been on parole, parole, he skipped the state. state. Florida, authorities Florida authorities issued an arrest warrant for him, but no matter how many times he was arrested in Oregon, he was never, he was held, never held nor extradited back to Florida. Back to Florida. Instead, they Instead, just, they kept, just letting kept letting him go, which pretty much is which exactly, much is exactly what the folks in Florida did. His presence in Portland, His presence in Portland the violent crime spree he had been on, the attempted double murder hate crime he had committed, wasn't some coincidence. This is the Ron DeSantis. Effect, him, and him and Christopher Rufo. When you hear DeSantis, you hear DeSantis or Rufo, or Rufo saying, they saying that they want what they've done in Florida to become a blueprint for the nation, for the nation this, this what DeSantis is what DeSantis and Rufo, Rufo are talking about. We'll continue, we'll continue with the moment, moment of truth in just a moment, but first, a word from the official sponsor of Black Empowerment, Power Tools. Power tools. There's no telling, There's no telling when something's going to come up, so make sure you carry your power tools at all times. 
Yes. Never no. know. Never know when you're going to need to bring the hammer down. Yeah. Or when you'll have some, you'll have some trash that needs to be blown away. Or some obstacle, or some that, obstacle requires that requires cutting, cutting down. down. Don't get caught, Don't get empty caught empty-handed. Empty Keep your, hammer, Keep your close hammer close by. Keep that leaf, Keep that blower, leaf at blower at the ready. And always, and always carry, your carry your steel. Power tool. Power tool. Because no matter because what, no your, matter day what your day job or side hustle may be, there's no excuse, there's no excuse for not being for ready to put in some work. Their entire goal, Their entire goal, goal has been to white embolden white supremacists to commit violence through a campaign of non-stop anti-black propaganda and the pushing of phony white grievance that's meant to justify it. That has been Rufo and DeSantis' goal, to pass laws and make public statements meant to make it clear that they are at war with black people and to encourage those with genetic immunity from the law to do the same. And as we saw in, and Jacksonville, saw in Jacksonville last and month, have and have now this seen this month, the racists from Florida, racists from Florida are, carrying are carrying out an organized race war against, against black people nationwide. nationwide. And, it is, not and it is not random. This has, this been, their has been their goal from the very beginning. The law doesn't, the law touch, doesn't touch those, those with genetic immunity because you have racists racist like Rufo and people, and people who think like him who are the ones who actually administer the law. And as we've seen with this Cummings creep, they just keep letting certain people go no matter what. This is done in order to make sure that certain people are given as much freedom in the society as possible. And this way, whenever some of them feel the urge to commit some hateful crime of violence, they won't be hesitant. This creep is one of these super predators the white media and the politicians don't talk about. So he targets people very carefully for his acts of violence. He didn't just pick those kids at random. He targeted them because he figured that being kids and not being part of the criminal class, they would be unarmed. Soft targets. That's what these white supremacists look for. White supremacists, white supremacists hate, the hate the idea of hate crimes altogether because to them, because to them that's, that's punishing whiteness. That's what they say, that's what they say by the way. Hate crime, hate crime laws, laws are, meant are meant to punish being, being white. white. Now, who's, now, been, arrested who's been arrested just for being white? For being white? The, laws are meant the laws are meant as an enhancement to crimes committed based on motive. But what they're really, what they're really saying, saying is what their actual mentality is. That apparently, that apparently to some of them, they feel that anti-black violence is part of being white, at least to the white supremacists. That's, that's, that's how they see it. They're telling on, They're themselves. Telling on themselves. This case, this is, yet case is yet another in an English string of examples, string of, examples of why there needs to be an anti-black hate crime law. Black people are, black people are the primary, primary and majority victims, victims of hate crimes in the United States. States. Even, when the, white Even when the white media was making a sensation out of stop Asian, 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 Asian hate, black people, black people were still the majority of hate crimes victims. And yet you can't even get the so-called politicians in Congress or at the state level to make an issue out of it. Not even the black ones. When it comes to hate crimes, Crimes, they have an open policy of not doing anything where black people are concerned. For any and everyone else, they can suddenly move. For example, back in May, just a few months before this race attack happened in Portland, the state of Oregon changed their guidelines for pretrial detention as it pertains to hate crimes. Oregon's chief justice signed an order that made it where people who have been accused of first degree hate crimes can't just get out of jail the very same day that they've been arrested. They have to wait at least until the arraignment judge. before the judge. And the reason why? The reason why? Because, you had, a because you had a white man who attacked a, who attacked family, a family of Japanese, Japanese descent. descent. You see, if, you see, it's, if it's a black people we're talking about, about well, there's nothing we can do. No laws are going to be changed. We're not changing anything. Oh, George Floyd was heinously murdered? Well, we're not changing anything. But with any and everyone else, oh, well, we can change laws for them. We can do something for them. That's how you understand that there is a rigid policy, ironclad policy of targeting black people. For them this for them is a hill they're prepared to die on. This is not merely, is some, not merely some happenstance. This is, this the, is core the core of their, of their political philosophy. philosophy. This, this is what their laws are geared around. Are geared around. Making sure that Making attacking, sure that black, attacking people black people goes unpunished, goes unpunished is, the is the core of America's, of America's public policy. policy. As black people, As black we, people have we have to take personal protection seriously. But understand, but understand these, white these white supremacists are making it their strategy to target children. black children. That requires, that requires extra, extra vigilance on our part to help look out for each other. But it also requires, it also requires extra, determination extra determination on our part to stop, part to these, stop race these race attacks too. too. The, authorities the authorities have a program, have a program at work meant to keep, to keep these violent, violent criminals on the streets until they eventually kill a black person. And only then will they finally be arrested. Maybe. Maybe. Well, if some, well, white, supremacists if some white supremacists call themselves, calls trying, trying to get you or some other, or some other black person on the metro train, train then you make, then sure, you to make sure to put on them on the bullet train. Out of here. Out of here. And that's this, and week's, that's this Friday week's Friday crime, crime report. Keep your eyes open, Keep your eyes open and, and stay on alert. Because there's a lot, because there's worse, a lot criminals worse criminals out there than the ones the white corporate media chooses to show you. Good day. Good day.
and B1. And B1. I'd like to take a moment, like to, take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Black Voltron, Black Voltron Reloaded, Reloaded, Brian Walton, Brian Walton Anthony, Pollard, Anthony Pollard, Sabrina, Sabrina, Sabrina and, Mark Anderson. and Mark Anderson. Salute to them and, Salute thank, to them and thank you to everyone listening, for listening, liking, and sharing, liking and sharing this message. Black Empowerment, Black Empowerment only exists because, exists because of you. White and homeless, I ain't buying it. You can best believe that motherfucker has some parents or some siblings or maybe even some kids that should be hunted down. Let him get that note that his fuckery just cost him a couple of family members. That's how we're gonna have to start acting towards these anti-black white people and anti-black Latinos and highly anti-black East Indians. <laughs>